In this video, we will learn all about truth tables. The first thing we want to talk about is some symbols and notation that you should know that will be helpful. The first thing is whenever you have this little curved symbol, you know that that means not or sort of the opposite. So if we know something is true P, not P is the opposite of that. Another symbol is this arrow symbol which actually just means your if-then statement. The actual arrow itself implies the then part of it. So you'll often see if P, then Q. Another symbol that you might have seen before is these three dots. And these three dots mean therefore. And that often comes when you're trying to make a conclusion. You say something, therefore something else. So if P, then Q, and we know P, Therefore, our conclusion would be Q. Two symbols we haven't seen before, or you might not have seen before, are AND, which looks like an upside-down V, and OR, which looks like a right-side-up V. Now, with truth tables, they're just a way to analyze logic and figure out possible truth values. And they will probably seem very abstract, but that's okay. We're going to go through an example. So this example will be determine the truth values for P and not Q or R. So if you want to make a truth table, the first thing you want to do is think about all the variables in your problem, which are P, Q, and R, and start by writing those out along the top. And then down in the columns, you have to figure out all the possible combination combinations of truths for those things. So for example, maybe they could all be true. You could have P is true, Q is true, and R is true. All of those statements are true. Or it could be that two of them are true and one of them is false. And there's different ways that that could happen. So you have to put in all three ways that one could be false and two could be true. It's also possible that two could be false and one could be true. And there's three ways for that. So let's put those in next. And finally, they could all be false. Now, what we're ultimately trying to figure out here is the truths for this big statement. So that's actually going to be the one at the end. P and not Q or R. So I sort of ran out of room there in my table, but that's okay. Now, in order to figure this out, we will first have to figure out what not Q is by itself. And then, once we know that, we'll have to figure out this whole combination of not Q or R. So you're sort of going piece by piece until you can get to your end. So we start with all of the variables by themselves, and then we're going to make it more complicated by looking at not Q. So if we know Q is true, then not Q has to be false, because not Q is always the opposite of Q. Not to Q is true, again, it's false. If Q is false, then not Q is true. So what I'm doing is just doing the opposite for all of my Qs to find my values for not Q. Okay? Now, I'm going to look at not Q or R. So in order for not Q or R to be true, it means either not Q is true or R is true. As long as one of them is true, then this overall statement will be true. But if both of them are false, then it will be false. So now I need to focus on my not Q column and my R column and look for if either of them are true or if they're both false. So in this first one, I notice that one of them is true, R is true, so that means not Q or R has to be true as well. In the next case, both of them are false, so not Q or R has to be false. In the next case, they're both true, so that means the OR statement is true. True, true, this one's false because they're both false, and then true and true because in each of these, not Q is true. All right, now we have one more step in order to finish off our truth table, which is P and not Q or R. So now we're going to be looking at this column combined with the original P column 
and figuring out their truth values combined. And with this symbol of and, it means in order for this to be true, what I'm filling in here, both of these have to be true. And if only one of them is true, or if they're not both true, then I would put in false. So in this one, the first one, they were both true, so I'm gonna put true. And the next one, one of them's false, so it's false. The next one, they're both true, so it's true. But in these next, all of these next ones, oh wait, here's another one that's true. I was gonna say they're all false, almost, except for that one right there. So the things you need to remember are, try to build your truth table one step at a time, keep making it more complicated, adding in sort of one more part until you get to the end. Anytime you see this or symbol, it means one of them has to be true, but not necessarily both. For and, they both have to be true in order to make that final statement true.